What is the maximum yield of iodine that can be obtained when one mole of Na2S2O8 reacts with excess iodine according to the equation above? It's not balanced, so first thing we should do is balance this. I see two S's on the left, so I'm gonna add a two here. Now I've got eight oxygens on the left, eight oxygens on the right. I'm gonna add a two next to the I, so that I've got two I's and two I's. I believe we're also balanced in charge as well now, so we've got minus four on the left, minus four on the right, so everything is now balanced. Next, we want to know what is the yield of iodine, so this guy right here, how much of this, how many moles, will be produced when one mole of this, which is basically gonna be the same thing as one mole of this, when one mole of this reacts with excess iodide. Well, if I'm gonna produce or react one mole of this by my mole ratio, a one to one ratio, I'm just gonna produce the same one mole of I2, so my answer is A. The heat of formation for CO2 is given as this. What does the negative value mean? Well, the negative value means it's exothermic, that it's giving up heat, that the energy of the products, the formation of CO2, the potential energy is lower than the, uh, I should say the enthalpy of CO2 is lower than the enthalpy of carbon and oxygen, what makes it up. So A, is CO2 endothermic formed? No. Does it occur rapidly? We don't really know whether it occurs rapidly or not. We have the delta H is negative, and that's you know, good for p potential spontaneity, but that doesn't tell us anything about the rate of a reaction. Just because something is potentially spontaneous doesn't mean it happens quickly. It just there's a lot of factors involved. So we don't know that for sure, so we're not going to put that. The enthalpy of the products, CO2, is less than that of the reactants. Yeah, that's what it means if it's exothermic. It's, it's releasing energy because of that difference in the enthalpies. No heat is liberated when carbon is oxidized. No, it's telling us that heat is definitely liberated when you oxidize carbon to produce CO2. And this is in the other direction. No, you must release 94.2 kcals, not uh, absorb them. So again, C will be our answer. The oxidation number of the nitrogen atom in ammonium is, well, ammonium is NH4+. Plus. We know each of these hydrogens is plus one, so that's a total of plus four for this. The overall thing has gotta be plus one, which means my nitrogen will have to be minus three because minus three plus this four will leave the plus one of the compound. So therefore I know my nitrogen has an oxidation number of minus three, so we get E. Which of the following is a saturated hydrocarbon? So Saturated means there are no double bonds, there are no triple bonds. And so you might, if you've done organics, you might be able to recognize that C is an alkane and as an alkane is, on, is um, saturated. But what if you didn't know that? Well, this might be one that would be hard to do without some organic background. I don't know if you will really see something like this very often, so I, I wouldn't say worry much about it until you've mastered everything else. But what you could do is you could just sketch these, make some Lewis structures, remembering that carbon needs to make four bonds and hydrogen needs to make one. So for example, for A, the only way A works is if you've got a triple bond between the carbons and that immediately makes this unsaturated because we wanna have for a saturated hydrocarbon only singles. A is out. For B, when you would sketch that, you would get this guy with a double bond and this again, not saturated. With C, when you sketch this, you're gonna get, I'm not gonna write in the H's, just imagine these are H's. You're gonna get saturated. I've got six H's, six single bonds between C and, C and H, and then I've got the single bond between C and C, and so C is the answer. D is benzene. This is a little bit hard to sketch. You probably just wanna know that C6H6 is benzene, and that's this ring of alternating single and double bonds with a hydrogen coming off of each spoke. And so that obviously is not saturated. And then C6H10, I'm not gonna sketch it, but if I'll leave that as an exercise to you. If you were to draw this out, you would see that this one is an alkyne, I believe. In other words, it's got a triple bond, I believe. Eh, let me sketch it now that I'm not, now that I realize I'm not actually sure. I believe it's, a, it's an alkyne, it's got a triple bond. So that's my six carbons. One, let me change the color. So here are my hydrogen bonds here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. So everything's satisfied. Everything's got its four bonds or its one bond in the case of hydrogen. And so this is C6H10 with that triple bond. That's not going to be saturated. And so my answer is C. Again, I wouldn't worry too much about this one. Yeah, occasionally there's organic on this test, but it's rare and you should be able to handle most of them anyway, just with the, the chemistry you know. So I wouldn't worry too much about this one.